Around the World in 80 Days, Chapter 15, to Hong Kong. Mr. Fogg and Aouda set out for a drive through the countryside around Singapore. Passepartout noticed Fix following them and laughed quietly at the detective's elaborate efforts to keep out of their sight. While they were gone, Passepartout went about his usual errands. At 11 o'clock, they were all back on board the Rangoon. The ship sailed out of Singapore Harbor. In a few hours, the high mountains of Malacca, with their forests inhabited by beautifully furred tigers, were lost to view. Phileas Fogg hoped they would reach Hong Kong in six days, arriving on November 5th. A steamer for Yokohama left Hong Kong on November 6th, and Fogg intended to be on it. The weather, which had been fine so far, changed soon after they left Singapore. The sea rolled heavily, and the wind rose almost to a storm. The voyage was rough, but luckily, the wind blew from the southwest, and the steamer sped forward. Passepartout was very impatient. You are in a great hurry, then, Fix said to him one day. To reach Hong Kong? A very great hurry, replied Passepartout. Mr. Fogg, I suppose, is anxious to catch the steamer for Yokohama, asked Fix. Terribly anxious, said Passepartout. You believe he is making a journey around the world, then? asked Fix. Absolutely, said Passepartout. Don't you, Fix? Me? asked Fix. I don't believe a word of it. You're a sly dog, said Passepartout, winking at him. This expression disturbed Fix. Has the Frenchman guessed my real purpose? he wondered. He was puzzled and after excusing himself descended to his cabin. Somehow Fix realized the Frenchman had found out that Fix was a detective. From the very beginning of their voyage, Phileas Fogg had been completely indifferent to his surroundings. Aouda's charm had failed to change Mr. Fogg's behavior one bit. Every day, Passepartout was surprised by Mr. Fogg's cool manner toward Aouda. It was obvious to Passepartout that Aouda felt a deep gratitude to him for saving her life. Passepartout was beginning to think his master was quite heartless indeed. Aouda was also wondering how Mr. Fogg could remain so robot-like, even in her presence. As the Rangoon approached the end of its journey, the rough weather grew worse. The wind turned to blow from the northwest, and the steamer fell behind schedule. On November 3rd, a tempest tossed the steamer with a fury. The captain estimated that they would reach Hong Kong 20 hours behind schedule. Phileas Fogg stood at the ship's rail, gazing at the stormy sea with his usual tranquility. Aouda was amazed to find him as calm as the day she had first seen him. His expression didn't change, not for an instant, even though a delay of 20 hours would make him too late to catch the steamer to Yokohama. If he missed the steamer, he would likely lose his wager. Fix viewed the storm in a different light. Any delay would give the warrant more time to reach Hong Kong. And if Mr. Fogg missed the boat for Yokohama, he would be obliged to remain some days in Hong Kong. Passepartout, on the other hand, was enraged beyond expression by the difficult weather. Everything had gone so well until now. Throughout the worst of the wind, rain, and waves, he remained on deck, working with the crew, pitching in wherever he could to help the Rangoon's progress through the storm. On November 4th, the sea calmed, the wind turned favorable, and the steamer made good progress again. Land was sighted on the morning of November 6th. They were 24 hours behind schedule. A harbor captain sailed out to meet the Rangoon to guide its captain through the channels and islands around the port of Hong Kong. Mr. Fogg did not hesitate to approach the harbor captain and ask about the steamer to Yokohama. The counterattack leaves at high tide tomorrow morning, said the captain. The steamer had to have one of its boilers repaired, so its departure was postponed until tomorrow. Ah, thank you, said Mr. Fogg, without betraying any astonishment. At one o'clock, the Rangoon was at the quay. Mr. Fogg led Aouda to the club hotel and reserved a room for the young woman. 
After seeing that she had everything she needed, he set out in search of her wealthy relative, Gigi. When Mr. Fogg returned to the hotel, he told her what he had learned. Mr. Gigi had left China two years earlier. He had retired with his immense fortune and taken up residence in Holland. In her sweet, soft voice, Aouda asked, What should I do, Mr. Fogg? It is very simple, he said. Come to Europe. Aouda was surprised. But I cannot intrude. You do not intrude, nor do you delay my project in the least. Passepartout, he called. Monsieur, said Passepartout. Go to the Carnatic and reserve three cabins. We have arrived in Hong Kong, and let me tell you, it is a bustling city. The name Hong Kong means fragrant harbor, and its own harbor was once surrounded by flowering trees. Hong Kong consists of three main areas, Hong Kong Island, Kowloon Peninsula, and the New Territories. So Hong Kong is bigger than most people think, with 236 islands in total. In 1834, Britain attacked China and demanded the country give Hong Kong to Britain. China refused, but did allow Britain to lease Hong Kong. I find that rather strange, don't you? A country being rented to another country? Maybe you're wondering why the British want Hong Kong for a colony. Well, it's mostly because Hong Kong is a massive trading port between East and West, and it acts as the gateway from America to Asia and from Europe to Asia.